Suspension comes with a lot of jargon and terminology, which can make it difficult to get the best from your mountain bike if you don't know what all those terms mean or what those things do. So I've set up this handy jargon busting guide to help you be more confident in the future. suspension is often referred to as forks. Now these are usually measured in millimeters. You usually get between 80 millimeters and 200 millimeters of travel. 80 and 100 millimeters are usually for cross country, whereas 200 millimeters is usually a downhill fork. Somewhere in the middle, 150 to say 170 or 180 is often referred to as long travel and is reserved for trail and enduro. The steerer tube is the top part of the forks, which is actually inside the frame, inside the head tube here. It will be clamped together by the top cap on the top here, and your stem will be attached to that to help you steer, hence why we call it a steerer tube. Attached to that steerer tube is usually this big piece of metal here, which is referred to as the crown. And this is where we often see dials and adjustments if you have them, including an air valve if you want to adjust air, if you have an air sprung fork. And a lot of your strength will come from the strength of the crown. So these legs here are what we refer to as stanchions and they hold the inner workings of your forks. So you'll have a damper side and you'll often have an air sprung or a coil sprung side as well, which we'll get into later. But all you need to know for now is that you need to look after these parts because if you have any scratches or gouges in them, then they can hold dirt and water and draw them into your forks, which won't help the life or the performance of your forks going forward. So these are your lowers and they move over the stanchions to provide you with your travel or your movement. Now the inner workings that we mentioned inside the stanchions actually go through the lowers and attach onto the bottom. But the uh, lowers don't actually hold any pressurized air, even if you have an air sprung fork. The lowers tend to just have some oil sat in there to lubricate the workings and keep everything moving nice and smoothly. And that's why we have seals at the top here to stop that oil coming out, but also to stop any water or mud getting in because you don't want that to mix with the oil and you don't want it to damage any internal workings either. So the lowers get their name from obviously being on the lower end of the suspension and they're usually joined by this arch up here which just adds a little bit of rigidity uh, to prevent them from flexing when the wheel turns or when you go through corners and rough terrain. However, there are some models out there which we refer to as upside down forks because the lowers make up the top part of the suspension and the stanchions are attached on the axle and they form the bottom part of your suspension. SAG is a measurement. It's kind of like a base setting measurement in which your body weight activates the suspension without riding. So stood on your bike, your suspension will sink into its travel. Now, usually this needs to be set up between 20 and 30%. And this will depend on perhaps your preference, but usually we set it up according to your manufacturer's model base settings. So your fork, say this Fox 38, might suggest that it needs to be set up at 30%, in which case we need to stand on the bike, uh, unassisted, not riding, 
So we need to make sure that our O-ring, or if you don't have an O-ring, a cable tie, moves up by 30% of your overall travel. And this will make sure that your fork is set up for your rider weight before you go riding. Now, if you have an air fork, then you will be changing the air pressure in your fork to get the correct sag. If you have coil forks, or indeed a coil rear shock, then you may need to change the weight or the spring rate of your coil to make sure that it sags to the correct percentage for your body weight. The term compression literally means your forks compressing, so moving into the travel of your forks. Now, often there'll be some compression dials on a fork, which allow you to adjust the speed and rate in which your forks compress. Now, sometimes on higher end forks, you have high speed and low speed compression. So high speed is when the fork compresses really quickly. So that could be big hits or landing jumps and low speed is when the fork compresses slowly. So this could be going into corners or it could be when you actuate the brakes and your body weight forces the forks to compress slowly. So you may have two dials where you can separate out those two or you may just have one to average the both out. Rebound refers to the action of your forks returning back to normal after a compression. Now, often a rebound dial will be found on the underside of your forks. It might have a cover like this, which you'll need to twist and take off in order to access those dials. Some high-end forks have low speed rebound adjustment and high speed rebound adjustment. So similar to the compression, a low speed rebound adjustment will adjust the speed of the forks returning back to their normal travel after a low speed impact like braking or going into corners. And a high speed rebound adjustment will affect the speed in which your forks return after a high speed impact like for example hitting a big square edge rock or landing a jump. Rear suspension is often referred to as a shock or a rear shock and if you have an air shock then you usually have a large body like this which holds pressurized air and is often referred to as the air can and what looks like a stanchion up the front that moves into that air can is what we refer to as the shaft. But if you have coil suspension, then it'll look a little bit differently. You won't have this large air can. Perhaps the shaft will be a little bit more narrow inside of a large coil or what will look like a really big spring. If you have one of these on your shock, which doesn't come on all shocks, but on some higher end and longer travel shocks, you'll have this and we refer to it as a piggyback. And what this does is hold oil so that it gives added performance benefit to an air shock over long descents. A lot of shocks will have compression and rebound adjustment dials on the shock as well and they work in a very similar way to what we explained with the forks. However on the rear you can sometimes have an adjustment lever like this which may say firm or pro pedal on there and firming up the rear suspension is just a quick way of making the shock a little more efficient and less bobby when you're climbing. Eyelet is a term that we use for the holes either end of a rear shock and these hold the mounting hardware and the bushings. Now the bushings are literally like bearings which allow the shock to move as the suspension and the linkage in the frame moves and the mounting hardware is just like the nuts and bolts which attach the shock to the frame. Now, if you hear the term trunnion mount, that just means that the linkage or the frame is attached directly to the upper part of the shock. 
spring rate is a term we use with coil suspension. It's a measure of the stiffness of a coil. So spring rate is basically the weight needed to move a coil by one inch. So you will need the appropriate spring rate for your body weight. Preload is another term we use for coil suspension and it often comes in the form of a collar which you can wind in or wind out to adjust the tension on your spring and this will fine tune your sag settings with a particular spring. Lockout is a term which refers to the action of completely locking out your suspension. So it closes the compression completely, and this is usually activated by a lever on your rear shock. It might even be actuated by a lever on your bars, which changes the compression damping in your fork. And it just acts as a quick way of firming up the suspension, usually to make climbing more efficient. Well, there you have it. That's what I think is the most commonly confused used terms uh, when it comes to suspension but if I've missed any then let me know down in the comments below I'll try and search through them and give you an answer uh, but also if you've got any other parts on the bike that you think needs a jargon busting guide then let us know um, maybe use hashtag AskGMBNTech uh, if you have any questions on particular parts but for now thanks for watching